is breaking harder or later faster? This is Ken Hill and we're going to talk about it. Yeah, it's a little bit of a loaded question because, yeah, I know we've all been out on track and somebody goes by you with a better lap time. They go by you and they're braking later than you. And of course, they have more speed, so they have to be braking harder than you. So, yeah, it has to be quicker. Well, we'll start with this, that if fundamentally you're not braking correctly, whether you're not using your eyes well, whether you're not using your motor controls well, maybe you're not taking advantage of what the brakes have to offer. Yeah, I mean, braking later and harder will produce a better lap time. But the goal of this video is to get you to think about, think about corners a little bit differently in regards to how you're using the brakes. And we're gonna get, we're gonna get into that pretty deeply. So yeah, let's, let's start with what are the brakes used for? So the brakes are used for three reasons, right? And we have a lot of material here um, that we've talked about that, but a little bit of a recap. The brakes are used for three reasons. The first one is speed control. Yeah, I mean, you've got to control your straight lines, your straight line speed. The second one is steering. And the third one is, is entry speed. And all three of those things are incorporated into that entry zone. And braking later or braking harder is a byproduct as you go quicker. Uh, that's going to happen, right? It has to, right? Because as you as you have more straight line speed, you accelerate for a longer period of time, you're gonna have to have more brake force, you're gonna brake at a later point. And there's a lot of very specific report cards that go along with that, where you're letting off the brake, um, how much brake pressure you have at turn in, um, are you on your apex? How much neutral throttle do you have? All those different things lead into that. So if, if you're in a spot where fundamentally you're not doing those things correctly, yeah, braking harder later is going to give you a little bit of a better lap time. But I want you to think of braking differently. And the, the, what, what I want you to be able to think about is, yeah, braking harder, braking later is, is a byproduct of all of those aspects done correctly. And the goal is to be able to get, by, by using the brakes correctly, the goal is to be able to get in and out of the corner in the least amount of time, right? Getting to the slowest point and away from the slowest point in the least amount of time. And that's where I really want you to change your thought process. I want you to change your thought process on thinking of corners as time in and time out. And just because if we get into our heads that you're just going to, okay, I got to go faster. So I'm just going to keep mashing the brakes. There's a point where that doesn't work and it doesn't work for a bunch of different reasons. It doesn't work because it will be slower, which I'll show you in a second. It also creates a reactive thought process. It ends up transferring weight crazy. You end up doing different things with setup and it just leads to this, this crazy hard plateau. So I want you to think of corners as time how much time to get in and how much time to get out. And that's what's going to help lead you to being able to adjust better with the braking for, you know, adjusting with brakes for, for different corners, adjusting your vision, how you're using your eyes, how all, all your different, all the different techniques, uh, which of course we've talked a bunch, uh, a bunch on this platform with. So, all right, let's get into some, uh, a great example. This is a great example um, that I want to take everyone through. And this example is actually kind of a fun one. And I want to I want to sort of restate that regardless of whether you're at the first 32% of your track journey or the last 0.01% of your track journey, this applies. And honestly, that's why it's important because if you're if you're thinking, well, I just got to go faster, I'll, I'll just go to the brakes later and harder, you're going to end up with a hard plateau and you're going to end up with frustration. You're going to end up setting things up um, setting things up in your, in your car, your bike, you know, to do that when actually that's not what you need. So I'm going to get a couple of aim speed graphs here. And the first, um, the first one is, yeah, we just have GPS speed. We have brake uh, pressure and bar and our bottom, bottom one is our time Delta. And when I first look at this graph, right. So when it first comes time to evaluate this, I have a reference lap. The reference lap is red. And these are two professional um, motorcycle racers. They're both very, very good. Same track, same day, same bike. 
so all of that is 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 equal and the writer in red happens to be about well less than about a second and a half off the overall track record for that for that class so very very quick the writer in blue is another second and a half or two seconds off of that and they don't know how to go faster they're they're they're, they're completely locked they don't know how to go faster and so when i look at this First thing I do is, you know, we're going to look at our slow points and see how our slow points match up. Make sure that the, the rider in blue that's frustrated has good bike placement, right? Good vehicle placement. And for the most part, all these line up really well. Honestly, their exits are fantastic. In some spots, their exits are better than the reference lap. So we know exits are not the problem. They're, they're doing great. They have the exits of you know, being a second and a half off the lap record. They already, they already did the work there. Where their work needs to be looked at is when we look at these graphs, then we start looking at the left side of these graphs and we can see that they're, they're quite a bit different than our reference lap. And then we can match it up with the brake pressure. We can just see that they are just, they're smashing the brake is what it boils down to. And that correlates with the time loss, right? So they keep losing this time and you know that's basically where the lap time is coming from. So let's blow that up a little bit more and get you to look at. It. We're just gonna we're gonna pick just a few more corners where we can really really sort of highlight this. So here you can see in just three corners they're losing close to a second a lap. And yeah, they go to the brakes too hard, too much, and that's where they're sh that's where the speed is really being shed. So this causes quite a few other problems, and I've got. Well, we could just use this corner as an example. So here they're going to the brakes approximately the same time they build brake pressure and they realize, oh my gosh, I went to the brakes too hard. They release, but they release too much too quickly. And then they have to go back to the brake. This, this causes a bunch of different problems. One, your brain's having to overthink all these different things that are happening. Oh, too much brake, not or, or too much brake, not enough brake. I got to go back to them. Oh, I'm losing, I'm losing trajectory, all those different things. So your brain is in a reactive mode. Not only that, because the weight gets transferred too quickly, we see setup issues here, right? So we end up having to run, whether a different setting in the front, whether it's different setting in the rear, whatever it might be, we end up with setup issues when it comes along with this. So if we could just get this person to apply the brakes a little earlier and softer and build into it, you'd really be surprised with that, what that does. It gives you more time in your head. The, the weight gets transferred appropriately and we don't shed as much speed off as, um, as we need to. And these are not large amounts when, when, you, when you look at it. When you look at the amount of bar, it's not that much. And if you look at the time, like for instance, I mean, we can, we can look at the time. If we looked at the time on this one here, they went to the brakes later, built quicker. When I did the time graph on this, they were going from zero break to maximum break in around three tenths of a second, where the rider with the quicker lap time actually went to the brakes a little bit earlier and got to max pre brake pressure in about seven tenths of a second. It's not a lot of time, but man, does it make a difference in the speed, right? The overall speed getting into the corner. So save yourself a lot of um, frustration and think about corners as time. I mean, when, when I'm on track, that's how I'm thinking of it. Like each individual corner, what does it take to get into the slowest point in the least amount of time and away from the slowest point in the least amount of time back to wide open throttle? So how I adjust my initial brakes, how I adjust my end of braking, be able to carry the speed in is what I'm really looking for. So think of corners as time in and time out and not just necessarily a, an incremental improvement or blanket statements like, oh, I got to be on the brakes as hard as I can for every corner. Oh, that's that's not quite how it works. Doing things correctly will give you the right amount of brake pressure and the right amount of brake timing. Uh, they absolutely will. But we have to think of this in a bigger picture rather than, again, these, these sort of blanket, these, these blanket statements or these blanket incremental improvements and instead stick with the idea of fundamental improvement.